Good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Collins, and I'm with URL Insurance Group. I'm an agent support specialist here at URL, specializing in single premium life products. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time out of your busy schedule today to be with us. Those of you that are currently doing with you, business with URL, I'd like to personally thank you. We understand that you have many options as to where you place your business. That's why we appreciate you working with URL, and we'll promise to continue our dedication to your success. Some of you are new to the URL family. Welcome. URL is a full-service national broker. We provide agents complete support in all of our lines. URL provides single premium life, which we'll be discussing today, fixed and indexed annuities, traditional life products, as well as individual and group health products. We also have a senior division that offers MedSup and MedAdvantage. Please take a moment after the webinar to tour our website at www dot url ins group dot com and discover if there are any additional avenues for url to assist with your success again that website is www dot url ins group dot com now i'm extremely excited to be part of presenting this great program for you today single premium life has been growing in popularity the past few years people and more specifically baby boomers are realizing that they have cash value and old whole life policies that they just don't want to continue to pay into. They have money that is set aside and earmarked for the next generation, making little or no interest in CDs or savings accounts, or have real concerns about their future with regards to long-term care needs. Today we're going to discuss a few products that will help your clients with all of these concerns. I'm proud to introduce Jason Goodrich. Jason is a senior wholesale manager at Equitrust Life. He's here to review different single premium life options that Equitrust offers and discuss how they will benefit your clients. Now before I turn it over to Jason, I'd like to mention should you have any questions during the broadcast, there's a question box on the right side of your screen that you can type in and we will answer them at the end of the program. So without further ado, I'd like to turn the program over to Jason. Thank you, Jason, and good morning, everybody. Uh, first off, Jason, do you have a, is my presentation up there before I get started? Sorry about that. I don't see. Uh, I need to share. I need to share my desktop. There we go. All right, there you go. All right, there we go. Thank you. Again, good morning, everyone, once yep. again. My name is, uh, as Jason said, my name is also Jason. It's Jason Goodrich. As you mentioned, I'm the senior wholesale manager here with Equitrust Life Insurance Company. Uh, first off, I just want to thank everyone for taking time away this morning to join me uh, for this presentation on three very exciting and, as you will see, extremely competitive wealth transfer life products from Equitrust Life Insurance Company. Uh, for anyone that's currently selling annuities and or working in the senior market at all, I really think it's important that you have single premium life products at your disposal when you sit down with your clients, especially considering the low interest rate environment we find ourselves in uh, for the last few years and probably going forward for a few more. Uh, during today's presentation, I'm going to expand on that a bit by talking about what I feel is the best positioning of these products. Uh, in addition, I'll walk through uh, the specifics of the products and the underwriting process, uh, as well as walk through a typical case scenario that I think really shows the power of using single premium life insurance with your clients. Now, in order not to take up too much time this morning, I'm going to try to move through this uh, fairly quickly, fairly high level, keep it around 30, 35 minutes or so. Uh, but as Jason said, you can type in any questions you have. Uh, then at the end of the presentation, I'd be more than happy to, to address any of those questions uh, at the end there. Uh, I also want to thank Jason, Joe, Maria, all the great folks over at URL Financial. Uh, they're actually one of the very first marketing organizations to get appointed with Equitrust on the annuity side when we started 13 years ago and on the life side when we started about five years ago. They've been one of the very first organizations. Uh, they're a tremendous partner and really appreciate their support of Equitrust. With that, let's get started here. Uh, first off, let's talk a little bit about where the single premium life is going to fit. What a, you know, there's really kind of two different things a client may be looking for uh, where single premium life uh, could be the answer. Number one is wealth transfer, right? So just any of those clients that have some money sitting somewhere uh, that they'd really like to pass it on. Uh, as a legacy. So, you know, maybe leave it to their kids or grandkids, maybe their favorite charity, church, school, what have you. Uh, 
uh, single premium life can be a, a great option for that. Just a quick example here, uh, I got a 60-year-old female that takes $50,000, sticks it into our single premium life products, they immediately have a tax-free death benefit of 103500 Okay, so if they purchase this product with the 50000 from a CD and they pass away six months later, their beneficiary is going to get $103,500 uh, tax-free. So over double their money immediately. With that, so you can see how well it works for wealth transfer. But the other thing we see a lot of, and, and I'd say it's pushing half of our business, uh, is not as much the wealth transfer part as it is <clears throat> the living benefits portion of, of these products. Uh, as you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there uh, that don't want to buy traditional long-term care insurance uh, for one reason or another. You know, maybe the cost of it. Obviously, it's hard to qualify for. Uh, the users are losing nature of it. Uh, the products we're going to talk about today can be an alternative to that. Now, I do want to point out that they are not long-term care insurance. Uh, this is not long-term care insurance. It's an accelerated benefit rider, uh, but it does address some of the same uh, needs and can do so in a tax-free way. Same quick example that 50, or excuse me, that 60-year-old female puts in $50,000. Immediately, uh, she will have $103,250 to take out of that to help pay for a chronic illness uh, or a terminal illness or something like that. And I'll get into that in more detail. But really, those are the two main reasons uh, somebody would purchase this product: either to have some money to pass on onto their beneficiaries or to address the lack of a long-term care insurance uh, through an alternative plan. One thing I always like to talk to talk about before I get into the products is kind of the sources of funds. So we do track that as a company, where the money's coming from. Okay? So I think it's important. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Did we just get started there, Jason? Yes, there you go. Do I need to start over? No, go ahead. OK. One of, the, one of the things I think is really important is to talk about the, uh, the sources of funds, uh, you know, where the money's coming from. Uh, really, yeah, we do track that internally here. And when you look at our products, 90% of the money we get into our single premium life product is either a CD or some sort of liquid account, like a checking account, savings account. Almost all the money we get really is bank money. Okay, it's not replacement business. Uh, you know, on the annuity side, probably 70% of our business is is replacement business. On the life side, it's like less than 10%. Okay, this is typically money they have sitting in a liquid account or a bank CD that they don't need, but they like the security of it being there and knowing they have access to it. Uh, and I'll talk a little uh, more about that in a minute. But that's where these products are really uh, uh, can be really popular and really uh, attractive to a client. It's for those people that have money sitting in the bank. We do see money from annuities too, though. So if they have an old annuity where they don't need the money, you know, makes sense to transfer it into the life product and, uh, and get that enhanced uh, tax-free death benefit. And Jason had mentioned this at the beginning, but life insurance policies, that's also a good option for this, to do a 1035 exchange for another life policy. Maybe they have an old uh, whole life policy that matures at age 95 or something, and they're concerned about it maturing. Uh, you know, they could uh, 1035 exchange it here, get a paid up uh, policy till age 121. Or maybe they're still having to fund their life policy to keep it in force. Once again, a good option would be to 1035 exchange the cash value uh, over to a single premium paid up policy. Uh, so it works really well there as well. And last but not least, and, uh, and I'll talk about this towards the end, but we do have one product that we rolled out about a year ago that's designed for qualified money. Okay? So those people that have IRAs and they're taking RMDs and they don't want the RMD, uh, they don't want to touch that money. We have a, a, a pretty cool uh, alternative for that that I'll talk about here towards the end of the presentation. Okay, before I get into the products uh, specifically, let me uh, kind of run through the underwriting process. I know underwriting can concern some people. They don't want to mess with these types of products because of underwriting. Uh, but really, the underwriting process with the Equitrust is, is a very simple under, underwriting process. Uh, first off, the underwriting is the same for all three products we're going to talk about. Okay, so when I go through this, this applies to all the products. It is an accept, reject type underwriting process. So simplified issue, standard to table four. So that we either take it or we don't take it. Okay, if it's table four or better, we approve it. If it's lower than table four, then it's a decline. You know, pretty much as simple as that. There is a pre-qualification chart. Uh, so once you're appointed with us, or even before, you can get a pull off a producer guide from our website. 
and it'll give kind of a general idea of what we'll take and won't take. It won't give specifics like, you know, certain types of cancers we'll take, certain we won't, things like that. It'll give you a general idea, like it'll say cancer diagnosed in the last five years would be a decline. Well, in a lot of situations it would, but there are some cancers in the last five years uh, that we would take. So it's really just giving you a general idea. If you want a better idea on a potential client, the best thing to do is to get with the URL. They can get with me and the underwriter, and we can give you an idea up front based on that client specifics if it looks like so something we could accept or not. So we do have that chart. Then the only two things that involve a client from an underwriting standpoint is there's obviously some health questions on the application. Okay, it's one page of questions in the application uh, that they'll have to answer. And then there's a phone interview that has to be done. Okay, a phone interview can be done one of two ways. <clears throat> uh, you can either schedule it to where uh, we call out to the client and do the phone interview, you know, the next day or, or what have you. Or what most people do, probably at least 75% of our advisors do, is <clears throat> they actually do the phone interview at point of sale. Uh, so you can definitely do that. So what would happen in that situation is you would take, you would complete the application with the client, go through all the health questions, sign the application, do all that, and then you, as the as the producer, would initiate the phone call for the interview. Okay, there's a cover page on our application that gives all step by step instructions how you do that. It's very simple. So you would call. They would ask you just a couple general questions like the product, premium amount, things like that, and then you would hand the phone off to your client. And at that point, the phone interview company is just going to re-ask the health questions on the application to the client. So they're going to go right through the questions you already asked them and noted, and they're going to re-ask them again. The difference is if they answer yes to anything uh, when, when, on the phone interview, they're going to drill down and find out more. So for instance, one of the questions is, is have you had cancer in the last 10 years, been diagnosed or treated for cancer in the last 10 years? If you answer yes on the phone interview, they're going to drill down to find out what the type of cancer was, what the treatment was, who the doctor was. Okay, so they're going to get more details on that. That's why it's important during the phone interview that the client has their doctor information in front of them, okay, and has their medications in front of them so they know how much medication they're taking and which medications. Uh, but those are the only two things that involve the client is the application questions and the phone interview. Okay, the typical phone interview is 25 minutes. Uh, just so you know, that's the average length of one. Uh, if they're perfectly healthy and really have nothing going on besides maybe a medication or two, then it'll probably be between 12 and 15 minutes. Okay, so it could be as short as you know 10 to 15 minutes, and on average it's about 25. In no situations do we do exams, paramedics, fluid draws, none of that. Uh, just those two things. Uh, now we do occasionally order APS, which uh, is attending physician statement or medical records. Uh, we do that in every case is over three hundred thousand dollars premium. Okay, so if it's over three hundred thousand, we will automatically order order uh, medical records as part of our pricing on the product. Uh, we'll pay for them, we'll order them, we'll take care of them. Uh, if it's between one hundred and three hundred thousand, it's underwriter discretion. So if the underwriter, in order to make a decision, feels like we need to see medical records, we'll order them in those cases. Okay, if it's below 100,000, we don't order them at all. We either accept it or decline it based off the information we have. Okay, it's not a lot of times, maybe 10% maybe of the time we order it. Uh, it's important you give us as much information as, as you can. That way we don't have to order, but I just want you to be aware that we do sometimes order medical records. And then once, and then as far as underwriting decisions, assuming we didn't have to order an APS, underwriting decisions are typically within 48 hours. Okay, so if we, we got if we received an app here on Monday and the phone interview was done, typically by Wednesday you would have an underwriting decision, assuming everything's in good order. Then what we do is we send real-time notifications. So as soon as the underwriting is approved, you'll get a automated email that states that it was approved. So you'll know right away that it was approved and that you can collect the funds. So that's the underwriting process. Uh, one other thing people worry about sometimes, I think, when they look at life insurance is liquidity. Right? Uh, can I get in my money uh, and when it's in a life insurance policy? And with this one, you definitely can. It's, it's a, although it's designed for wealth transfer, uh, we, w we know people's financial situations change, so we wanted to have a lot of liquidity and a lot of flexibility within the product. So that's part, a lot of what we thought about when we designed it. So it has free withdrawals. You know, on an annuity, obviously, you see a lot of 10% free withdrawals. This is a 5% free withdrawal once per year. Okay, can't do it systematically or anything, but once a year they can go in and take out 5% if they need to. Has a loan feature on it. Okay, so they can get out a loan if they need to. 
Uh, one of the great features with it that I'll come back to in a second is the ultimate liquidity is the return of premium on one of our products. So they can get all their money out at any time. And I'll come back to that. Uh, and then, then uh, you know, I think another great li liquidity option, obviously, is the accelerated death benefit uh, for living benefits, the ability to get their money out to pay for a chronic illness. And let's talk about that right now. Okay, first off, the living benefit rider is available at no charge. Okay, we just automatically add it uh, to the policy at no charge. In the states, it's approved. There are a couple states uh, where it's not approved at the rider, but in most states it is approved. The, t the three main ones, or the three really that, that don't have the full version of the rider, would be California, Florida, and Connecticut. Most other states, it's in. So it's it's approved in states like Pennsylvania and Ohio and Texas and uh, a lot of states where it's hard to get uh, some of these things approved. It is approved there. Now, although there's no charge, if they do elect it at any point, uh, there's a one-time charge of just $250 subtracted from the value to elect it. There are three things that can trigger us to pay out that death benefit while the client's still living. Number one is that, is that they're terminally ill, so diagnosed as less than 12 months to live. At that point, we would pay them whatever, 95% of the death benefit tax-free would be paid to them if they were terminally ill. Number two is nursing care confinement. So if they're confined to a nursing care facility for 90 consecutive days, we will pay them, <laughs> excuse me, we would pay them 100% of the death benefit over three years. Right, so whatever the death benefit is, divided by 36 months, that's what they would get every, each and every month for three years to help pay for their nursing care confinement. Or if they choose, they can do a lump sum option. So if they don't want to do it monthly, they can take out just one lump sum of 85% of the death benefit. Okay, so uh, now in that case, we keep 15% and the policy closes, so they're not getting the full value in that case because they're taking it all out before they pass away. Uh, the monthly option is going to is how most people do it, and is a way for the client to get the most uh, uh, money out of the policy. And it's the most tax efficient way to do it too, is monthly, so they can make sure they stay within the per diem limits. The third trigger, and really the most popular, is what we call chronic care. Some call it chronic illness. Is all that is is that's uh, certified the loss of two of six ADLs. Okay, the loss of two of six activities of daily living, so uh, for at least 90, 90 days. So if we get a letter from a doctor stating they've lost two of six ADLs for 90 days and it's expected to be permanent, just from that letter, we, we will accelerate that death benefit and pay it to them over five years. So 100% of the death benefit divided by 60 months each and every month to help pay for that. Okay, or if they want to do a lump sum, they get 75% of the death benefit in a lump sum. Okay, as I mentioned at the beginning, probably half our sales are really because of this rider for those people that don't have coverage for a, for a chronic illness. Uh, it's a way to do it, and then if they don't ever need it, they still have that, that great death benefit to pass on to their kids or grandkids. Uh, so it works great for situations like that. And there's no charge if they don't ever use it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the kind of the flagship product, which is the WealthMax bonus. This is our top selling product. You know, probably 85% of our sales in this product and is the leading simplified issue single premium life market in the industry for the last three or four years. And uh, you'll see why as we kind of walk through it here. First off, just some of the basic, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, facts on it. The issue age is 50 to 85. Uh, our average issue age is 68, 69 right in there on this. So it is a senior product. Minimum premium is $10,000. The maximum is based off of the uh, face amount. So maximum face amount is 750000 Okay, so it depends on their age in that situation how much premium we could take. And just so you know, our illustration system is set up uh, so that it won't let them run an illustration for more than we'll take in those situations. Our average premium size is about $80,000 in the product. It does have a guaranteed uh, death benefit. So this is a single premium guaranteed death benefit to age 121, has a surrender charge for 10 years, starting at 10% and going down from there. That kind of three of the sizzle things with it that really make it attractive, I think, is first off, it's an index product, right? So because of that, you have your guaranteed death benefit, but as you'll see in an example we'll go through in a minute, there's a lot of growth potential in it too. And what happens when that account value grows is the death benefit also grows. So the client has their guaranteed values for wealth transfer or for chronic illness, but the values very well may be higher than, than those guaranteed values. Like I said, we'll walk through an example. 
Other unique thing about this product compared to other life products out there is it has a premium bonus on it. Uh, it's 12% upfront premium bonus. So if they send us $100,000, they immediately start with $112,000 on that. And what that does is that immediately pushes their death benefit above the guaranteed death benefit because of that bonus. And last but not least is the return of premium guarantee. So on this product, in every state where the product's approved, and it's approved in almost every state, it has a return of premium guarantee on it at no charge, just automatically added to it. And what that means is exactly what it says. They can get a return of their premium at any time. So if they buy this and then five or six months later, something happens unexpected and they need to get the money, they can surrender and get all their money back. On it. So just a great feature. I mentioned towards the beginning that a lot of what we get in this product is bank money uh, and it's producers going back to current clients uh, with money they have sitting in the bank. As you probably know, a lot of that is money they don't need but they like having it there, you know, just in case money I call it. This product can be attractive for that because they could put it in this product, get the great death benefit for the wealth transfer which really is their goal with the money, address the chronic illness need. Uh, with that money if they need to, and if something happens that's unexpected, they have access to it to get it back. Okay, so uh, that's been a great feature with the product, a peace of mind feature, and, and the fact is most people never use that. It's really more of a peace of mind thing for them. Okay, I mentioned this is an index product. Here's the, uh, the current caps on it. Uh, fixed account's 4%, has a one-year point-to-point -point with a 9% cap, a one-year monthly cap with a 3% cap, and then we have a two-year strategy with no cap. Then over on the right, you kind of see what we illustrate at historically uh, uh, based off what the current caps are. So when you run an illustration, what illustrated rate it will use uh, in those situations. And of course, we pay uh, very well on it too, as Equitrust has been known to do. Uh, commission ages 50 to 75 is 9%. Ages 76 to 80 is 8.5. And then it's still 6.5% from 81 to 85 on the commission. If, if you're not familiar with Equitrust, we do pay daily commissions. Uh, so if a poly, policy issues today, uh, we will uh, process the commission payment tomorrow, the next business day. Uh, one other thing I should point out is we, there is a chargeback for surrender on this. We talked about the return of premium. You know, for protection on that, there is a chargeback in the first two years of 100%. Now, if they die in the first two years, there is no chargeback. If they accelerate the death benefit in the first two years, there's no chargeback. If they take a withdrawal, there's no chargeback. Okay? It's only for full surrender. Once again, the product isn't designed for them to buy and then use the return of premium and surrender later. We don't want that. Uh, we don't like that. It's designed for wealth transfer, but, but given them the flexibility of something changes down the road where they do need it, they know they can get at it. Okay, so really what does WealthMax uh, offer your clients? Really there's three things. Uh, that a client would be looking for and would get uh, with this product. Number one is they get that guaranteed tax-free death benefit for wealth transfer. Right. Number two, they get those living benefits. Uh, you know, for those without, you know, adequate uh, chronic Ill illness coverage, this can address that need. And last but not least, they get the peace of mind to know that if something happens down the road, their roof gets caved in, they have the ability to go get the money out to help pay for that. Okay, what I want to do now is just kind of walk through a quick case scenario. Uh, very, you know, this case scenario is very much like a lot of the business we get here. Uh, we'll take Betty here, who's a non-smoker, age 60. She has $50,000 in a CD earning 2%, which, as you guys know, is a, that would be a pretty good CD right now. Uh, her goal is to leave the money to her two grandkids. Her one concern is she doesn't have adequate long-term care insurance. Uh, and then her options. We're going to give Betty three options and then compare them. Number one is to leave the money in the CD, continue to earn that great CD rate of 2%. Option two would be to transfer to a MIGA uh, annuity at a 3% rate, which is a common uh, a MIGA rate right now. And of course, third would be to buy the wealth max bonus. Now for this example with the annuity and the CD, we're going to assume a tax rate on this at 28% because obviously the CD is going to be taxable every year and the annuity at death, uh, you know, in most situations is going to be taxable uh, to the beneficiary there. So first let's look at the CD, which as I said was at 2% for $50,000. You can see in 10 years the value would grow to 57,884 and in 20 years it would be at 67,494 uh, if Betty were to pass away. Number two is the annuity. It's a little better at the 3% rate and with the tax deferral on that. 
So at 10 years, it's 62,381, and at 20 years, if she passed away, she would leave the two grandkids a little over $79,000. And third, let's look at the wealth max bonus. Uh, you can see immediately, day one, that $50,000 is a death benefit of 103,500, and it is 10 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later, guaranteed to leave 103,500 to, to those two grandkids uh, if she were to pass away. Now, keep in mind, too, this is an index product like we talked about, so there's potential of growth in the values, which in turn leads to growth in the death benefit. So in this example, I used a just a 5% illustrated rate, and you can see in 10 years, the value is actually 122,782, and in 20 years, it's 131,839. So there's potential to, for it to grow above those guaranteed values, for sure. So obviously, if her goal is well transferred, this is going to be the best option for her, and it's not even really close. Now let's say she doesn't pass away, but instead five years later she needs access to money uh, for a chronic illness or nursing care or terminal. Okay, obviously with the CD and the annuity, she's not, you know, there's some flexibility there, but you can't get out the same amount you can with something like this. Uh, with this, for terminal illness, she's guaranteed day one to get out $98,075 if she's terminally ill. Now remember, she just put in $50,000, but if she's terminally ill, she can get out $98,000 tax-free. Nursing care confinement, you can see she could either do the lump sum or she can do what most people do and take out $2,868 a month guaranteed for three years to help pay for her nursing care confinement. Once again, that's all based on that $50,000 uh, premium she put into it. Now, if she were to pass away before the three years was up, whatever's left would just be paid in a lump sum to the beneficiary. And third one, really the most popular one is chronic illness. Uh, now, chronic illness, you can see, based on that $50,000, would be $1,720 a month guaranteed for five years to help her pay for her home health care in that situation. The numbers you see in front of you there, they will show on the illustration. We have a, a page on our illustration uh, that's completely dedicated to the accelerated death benefit writer. So it will show, when you're sitting down with your client, it will show him or her exactly uh, what their guaranteed monthly payment will be for nursing care or chronic illness. So they know that up front. We have a lot of people that actually back in to the premium. They know, you know, we're going to need $2,500 a month for home health care. How much premium do I need to put into that? And that's how a lot of people will do this. Uh, obviously, not everybody has enough money to do it that way, but it's something I wanted to uh, pass along to you. Okay, we talked about if she passes away. We talked about if she goes in uh, nursing care and needs home health care. But what if Betty changes her mind? What if she decides, you know what, I don't want to leave money to my kids anymore? You know, something happened with the grandkids, I don't want to leave them anymore. Instead, I think I'll go buy a motorcycle for myself, take up motorcycle riding. Or what if I decide to take up water skiing and buy a boat? The beauty of this product is the return of premium gives Betty the right to change her mind. Right. She can change her mind and get out of it and get all of her money back. Okay, uh, I think that's one of the beauties of the product. Okay, last thing I want to say on this product before we move on to the last two, which I'll go over a lot quicker, uh, is we have a little show book flip chart type thing. It's a client-approved piece. We only send out one to an agent. Uh, but once you're appointed with us, if you're not appointed, uh, we can send this to you, and it goes through the Betty example goes through basics for a client of what single premium life insurance is, talks about it being tax-free, things like that. We get real, really great feedback on this on this piece. Uh, so I wanted to point it out, uh, and you can give with Jason a URL, and, and you know, they can get those over to you, or get with me to get them to you. Uh, either way works. So I wanted to pass that along. The next product I want to talk about, just real briefly, is called the Wealthshare Life. Now, this is the same underwriting as the Wealth Max. What's different about this one is it's an interest-sensitive product. Okay, the other one was indexed. This is interest-sensitive. Also, there is no bonus on it, so it doesn't have the 12% bonus. It does not have the return of premium okay, on it at all. Uh, the goal of this product, the purpose of this product is really just for those clients, number one, that know they're never going to need the money. They got plenty of liquid money. They know they're never going to need this. They just want to leave it to, to their beneficiary. Okay, and pass it along. That's also for those clients, that not only are that, but like simple, okay? This is a very straightforward, very simple product, very simple illustration to understand. Uh, illustration is, like I said, extremely simple. 
we see a lot of older clients in this one. You know, I mentioned the wealth max, the average age is 68 to 69. The average age on this product is about 74. So obviously the older the client is, you know, probably the more they know that they're not going to need the money and the more they want something that's very easy to understand. Product does the same thing. It, it, it passes along a tax-free death benefit. It has the accelerated death benefit. So a lot of the same features, it just doesn't have the same liquidity. Now, it does have a 4% interest rate on it, on the fixed account. Because of that, in some situations, you will see an increasing death benefit on it because of the interest rate. And it pays very well in the commission. You can see 55 to 65 is 15%, 66 to 80 at 14, and we're still at 10 and a half from 81 to 85 on the Wellsure. Uh, typically, the guaranteed death benefits are similar to WealthMax. There are some ages where the Wellsure will have a little higher one, and there are some ages where the WealthMax will have a little higher one. A lot of people just run both illustrations when they go with the client and you know let them decide. Okay, those are the two single premium life products, and all those are really designed for after-tax money, right? But what about all those people out there that have qualified money uh, that they don't want and they don't need? Uh, what options do you have for them? And that, and that was our thought process when we developed uh, the Wealth Pay Life product. What this product does is it combines a SPIA, so a single premium media annuity, with a fixed premium whole life product. Okay, combines them together. What happens is they can do annual, they do annual SPIA payments into the life product. So you put the money into the SPIA, and then you, along with the client, choose whether you want to do a three pay, a five pay, or a 10 pay, okay? So we put, and then whatever you choose, we put the money in the SPIA, we hold the SPIA as qualified, you know, as an IRA or whatever it is, uh, and then we fund the life policy there, okay? What that does is it spreads the taxes out over, over that. So instead of taking that IRA uh, and buying the wealth max and having the whole thing be taxable immediately, this is a way to spread that taxation out uh, for three, five, or 10 years to them but still get a lot of the same benefits that you get with the wealth max bonus. Okay, you can also do this with non-qualified money, right? And the advantage of that would be if they have a non-qualified annuity where they don't need the money, you could 1035 exchange it over here because it's actually going into an annuity with us, a SPIA, uh, and then so it'd be tax-free coming over to us, and then we would take advantage of the exclusion ratio and tax them over the three, five, or 10 years based off the exclusion ratio. So it works very well for that, too. I think almost half the money we get is not qualified into this. Uh, now, it, although we're paying it over three, five, or 10 years, they get the death benefit immediately, okay? So they have that guaranteed death benefit day one, even if we haven't funded it all. And what happens if they were to die, let's say, before we completely funded the life policy? So let's say they did the five pay and they die in year two. We will pay them the death benefit of the life policy, but we'll also pay them the commuted value of the SPIA. So the total death benefit actually is very high during the payment period because they get both values to them. Some of the specs on the product, the issue age, it's a little older than on the other ones. The minimum age is 60. Uh, maximum age is 80. Uh, the average age on this is, is, is over 70. I'd say around 73, 74. Uh, the reason we I think that is is because a lot of people, this becomes attractive to them once they have to start taking RMDs. They start taking RMDs, they realize, you know what, I don't really want these. Are there any other options out there? And then there's this, you know, then, then this, that's where this seems to fit at. But this product, they're still taking RMDs. The difference is the RMD is the SPIA payment that's going to the life policy. So the RMD is not coming to them. Not only that, but we will actually withhold taxes from the SPIA payment. When you run an illustration, you can have tax withholding included, so they won't even have to pay the tax on it. We'll pay it for them from the SPIA payment uh, right to the IRS. Uh, premium limits, 25000 minimum. Maximum is based on face amounts, $500,000. Uh, this one does have an accelerated death benefit rider. I'll talk about it in a second, but it's a little more limited than what you see on the wealth max and has a 10-year surrender charge schedule. Uh, as I mentioned, it's funded by a single premium immediate annuity. They have the three different options that you guys can elect. What I'll say is the, the less uh, payments they make, the higher the guaranteed death benefit is going to be. Okay, so a three pay is going to have a higher death benefit than a five pay, and a five pay is going to have a higher one than a ten pay. Okay, the longer you spread it out, the lower the guaranteed death benefit will be. It is an index product, so you have some growth available in it. And although it's two products, because it's the SPIA and the life policy, uh, we treat it really as one. And to you and to the client, it's one transaction. It's one application. So we don't have two applications, if you will. It's one application that 
uh, for these two products. So one total, and it's one commission. Uh, you know, we really try to make it look like one process for you, uh, and it works very well that way. So just a quick example of how it works here. We've got Sharon's got fifty thousand in a four hundred one k that she doesn't need. She buys this, chooses the five pay option. So we'll send over over four years. We'll send five payments into the life policy. You get each payment. There's ten thousand six hundred sixty dollars, and then she's going to get five different ten ninety nines. Right? Instead of getting one big 1099, she's going to get five smaller 1099s over a four-year period. And it gets her a guaranteed death benefit of $95,261, okay, guaranteed. Okay, now keep in mind, if she passed away in year three, she would get, still get the 95261, but she'd also get the commuted value of the remaining SPIA payments. And the illustration does show that. Now there's a living benefit rider. It's the same deal where we don't charge for it unless you use it. So it's automatically included in the states it's approved. <laughs> Excuse me. There's two triggers with the accelerated death benefit rider on this product, terminal and chronic. So we don't have a nursing care. Okay. One of the things I want to point out is during the premium payment period, the accelerated death benefit rider is pretty limited on it. So really they would not want to accelerate it until it's been fully funded. They could, but they're going to be limited on what they can get, as you can see from the chart. Chronic care, they can only get 25% of the death benefit during the premium payment period. However, if they wait till the, the life policy is fully funded in the three, five, or ten years, and then they accelerate it, then it's just like it was on the wealth max and get 100% of it over five years. Okay, so it depends on when they accelerate it. A few special considerations that differentiate the wealth pay from the wealth max and wealth show. I just want to point out so you're aware of. Number one, there is a product training requirement. So if you're interested in this product at all, Make sure you go out to our website and complete the product training for it before you solicit any business. Uh, if you don't do that, unfortunately, we won't be able to take the business. The reason that it, uh, we have product training on this is because of the SPIA, because there's an annuity involved. <coughs> we do not have any product training on the Wealth Max or Wellshire, so you don't have to do anything with that there. Number two, there are some limitations on liquidity during the premium payment period. Okay, so although you could get a withdrawal during the three, five, or ten years. It's not going to work very well uh, because of some issues that I won't get into for, you know, for uh, time consideration here. I won't get into it, but feel free to contact us and we can talk about it. Really for liquidity, if they need to get money out, it's going to work best if they wait until their life policy is fully funded. Tax withholding on the SPIA. Uh, I mentioned that we do withhold taxes on the SPIA if they choose, if they choose to. So it's an advantage we have, but also they should know that they probably don't want to change the tax withholding on the SPIA. Okay, so if they're withholding 10% taxes and after year one they, they decide, you know what, I want to change that to 20%, that's going to cause some issues because then we're not going to have enough money going into the life policy and we're going to have to bill them for the difference, right? So it's really not going to be advantageous for them to change the tax withholding after issue. And if we received a request to, we would notify you as the advisor to make sure you understood what could happen to the policy if they change that. And last but not least, there is a suitability requirement on this product because of SPIA. So it, or because of the SPIA, it does go through a suitability process. Wealth Max and Wellshire, they do not go through suitability. Okay, they just go through underwriting. But this product would go through suitability. Uh, there you can see the caps on it. Uh, very good caps again. Nine percent point to point, three and a quarter monthly cap. One of the real pop popular strategies with this product is actually the monthly average. One year monthly average has no cap and 100% participation rate, so it's been very attractive. And there you see the illustrator rates on it. And last but not least is the commission. We pay a little more commission than on the Wealth Max because of the SPIA involvement. So we're paying 11% commission to 75 and then still 6% commission from 76 to 80. There's a couple more things here and then we'll see if we have any questions. Um, website, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this, but uh, the main thing I want to say is if you're interested in this, I'd encourage you to contact URL and get appointed so you have access to our website so you can see material that we have. Obviously, illustrations are out there and things like that. So I'd encourage you to get appointed. Uh, contact Jason and get that get that rolling. And last but not least, just a little bit about Equitrust. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been around for about 14 years. Uh, I've been a top 10 index annuity carrier for most of those years, continue to be, continues to be a big part of our business. But we got into the single premium life insurance about five years ago and have been very successful with it. And it's a big part of what we want to do. Uh, we're continuing to try to grow that business. 
uh, you know, we did over 250 million of it last year and want to do more this year. So from a financial standpoint, you can see the financials are very strong, 95% investment grade, RBC at 400%, and solvency at over 106. So the numbers, uh, you know, continue to be very strong from a financial standpoint. We are B double plus rated. Uh, just so you're aware, we are working very hard to get that rating uh, up to the A level, and that's the number one focus of the company is to get that rating back. So a lot of what we do is, is, is with that being the end goal, and we, think, and we definitely think we'll get there. With that, that's all I have today. Uh, I guess I'll just uh, thank, well, first off, let me just thank everybody for joining and then pass it back to Jason to see if we have any, any questions. Yeah, thanks, Jason. That was great and very informative. I don't see any questions that have popped up. So okay. with that being said, you know, I want to thank everyone for joining today with the presentation. Please feel free to call us at URL for all of your single premium life and annuity needs or visit our website at www.urlinsurancegroup.com. Should it be brochures, illustrations, or simply answers to your questions, our toll-free number is 1-800-926-8875. My name again is Jason Collins and I'm at extension 156. You can also ask for Joe Corio at extension 111 or Maria Adams at extension 102. Thanks and have a wonderful day. Thank you everyone.